Every exhibition at the Pulitzer Arts Foundation really seeks to think through the architecture of our building, which is a work of art in its own right. And one of the main features is the light. We were interested in highlighting an artist who can really bring something out in the building and where building can really speak to the artist's own interests. Mirara Rosso experiments in light and form is precisely that. We have positioned the artist's work across the, the building in different spaces that change over the course of the day with daylight, nightlight, just to kind of see what the surfaces that the artists heavily worked to have them interact with light can do in our building. The artist was working at a time when the incandescent light bulb was developed and so he has very specific thoughts about how to position his own sculptures relative to natural light, but he's also experimenting with the incandescent light bulb. We have developed this room to invite visitors to manipulate how the light falls on a single sculptures and really to understand how the light can change our experience of one work of art and our perception of it, how the mood can be changed, how the colors of the sculptures can be changed. If you want three words to classify Rosso, he was very experimental, he was very radical, and he's also unclassifiable and he liked it that way. He would tell people that he was born on a train so that people couldn't identify his nationality. He is an Italian artist who spent many years in Paris and the most avant-garde moment in Parisian modern art. He is considered the impressionist sculptor, but that's a very limiting title for him. He's known to have influenced many modern artists after him, although he's not that well known to the public, especially in the United States, despite being so influential. He shunned the entire heroic tradition of sculpture. This is the great age of monumentomania. And instead, he chose figures from daily life, images of men who are sick, the elderly, women, children, figures who are laughing, smiling, caught in these kind of in-between emotional states of drowsiness or reverie or melancholy. He was trying to capture an impression that was made on him, a glimpse or something visual that he had seen, but also something that affected him emotionally. Rosa is very unusual in that he has a very limited amount of subjects, 50 altogether, and then he repeats them over the course of his career and he casts them in wax, in plaster, and in bronze, and so we wanted to really highlight his process and his interest in iteration by showing not just one version of a subject, but multiple versions of a subject. Rosso would cast his works in gelatin molds and because he opened his own foundry when he lived in Paris, he was able to manipulate the process of casting and stop at any time and work on his works. He also could avoid patinations and could keep all kinds of errors of casting in the work and you'll find lots of holes, lots of nails, gashes, air bubbles, every imaginable no-no in the world of casting of the 19th century, Rosso welcomed into his works. He also made photographs and drawings that we are exhibiting many for the first time. It's a very interesting show because we're mixing sculpture, photography, and drawings. His only subject in photography was his own works. He was experimenting again with how the light impacted the surface of his sculptures, which was his great concern. And he is the first artist to really make light a material as much as the work.